Hello. Oh, Ros here. I'm just going to see if I can do another video this afternoon. It is ages since I've done a video. But anyway, I said I promised the people in New York, would you believe I'm in touch with some teachers in New York, and I promised them that I would show them, um, get them a video to show them how we can do at my two-stitch crochet, which is... Uh, eventually you can make faces or pictures and anything with this method so i promised them i would make them a video so that's what i'm going to attempt to do this afternoon so um, first of all let me have a look what i can do here um i think i might have to teach, turn around i'm going to sit down in my chair look this is going to have to be my new working desk so I, I don't know if this is going to work very well but we're going to try it for the first time so here we go ready as well so um it's the usual thing when people come on and they do the videos the first thing they do is uh, start adjusting the hair and making sure they look nice because for the first time it's like looking in a mirror so here we go then so what i'm going to show you then is my new method of how we can make pictures faces anything that you would like to make out of like a fabric um here's an example of um my work in progress here and you can see it's uh, like a, a boat on the water. I'm not quite sure if this is the, the rocks at the side or what I'm going to do for the rest. I have got a plan because when I got to this stage with the boat, then I start thinking about whether I'm going to put tree a, a tree in the picture and how the rest of the, the sky is going to develop as well. We, use, we need to start with a, just a simple chain. A, a, another tip for people, if you're doing this, you need a pallet of yarn. And I keep mine in a box like this. And it's really useful because they don't get all, if you have them in a bag, how many times do they get all tangled up? But look, if we keep our, our yarns in a box like this, it is so much easier to keep the, them from not getting into a, a mess. So first of all, you'll need a slip knot. And I often leave an end because I like to uh, plait the ends of, of my work. Instead of sewing them in, I plait them. So we start with a slip knot and then we yarn over and pull over the end. And uh, this isn't really a tutorial on how to make the first chain. If you want to do that, there are chain, there are uh, tutorials for on my YouTube channel and you can learn how to do that. So what we need to do, I, I find that if you do this a lot, and I've been doing it for about four years now, so if you do this a lot, you can soon get going so that you can quickly make a chain with a latch hook. Very quick to do. And children get really absorbed in this as well. So this is what we're doing to start with. I'm making a chain. And if you pull it through your fingers, slip it through your fingers, and keep it, you can keep it quite even as it comes through. A lot of people who crochet traditionally, they can they can get used to doing it after a while and they can do it quite quickly the way I am. So it's nothing new to be able to crochet quickly. But I find that teaching it with a, a, a latch hook makes it so much easier. So that's how we start with just a plain foundation row. And when you want to finish off, you just slightly pull the end like that. You don't have to knot it. So there we are. Okay, I, I used to say just pull it and it won't come undone but now I like to just leave the end because you can see very much at the end there's like a little faded hole in the middle there which we can hook into with the next colour. So in my book um, Lateral Crochet for Beginners one of the bracelets is like this and I, I don't, I've had several names for it over the years but it's too two colours joined together like this and in between you've got these spaces which I call bridges. The reason for that is they, they do look a little bit like bridges don't they? The green ones there are like bridges. So this is my bridges method. I call it crochet art. So if you're going to, going to doing crochet art this is the way you can do it by starting off with making bridges like this. So that's what we're going to do just for a second now. I'll show you. We've got our foundation row here. And we hook into the end. And as I said before, there's somewhere to hook. I haven't pulled it tight this time, so I can easily hook into the end. 
hook into the end and then choose another collar and uh, if you're making bracelets you want to leave an end here so you pull up a loop like that so you've got one loop through there and then you count six one two three four five six if you want to do five that's fine five or six and then you're going to work along this here by picking up a, picking up the stitches okay so we're going to work approximately the same length of the six we've got i don't count there's no need to count at this stage because it, it doesn't have to be perfect so you hook in with the end of the hook and bring up a loop and pull it through Let's see if we can get this pull it through the loop on the hook and that's a slip stitch and then you do six more one two three three four five six now we've seen you can see there there's our first bridge and when you're doing latch up crochet in this method you'll find that the first row where you're joining onto the foundation row is the hardest one and the reason for that is because you're going to be hooking under the bridges for the next row. So you do about six, five or six, and then hook in. You don't need to count, you can measure if you like, but it's going to make a bridge. And you're going to hook into one of those and yarn over and pull it through. We've got, to, you can tell whether it's right or not because you've got a pink one and a green one to pull it through there. And that's how to make your flip, slip stitch. So it's chain and slip stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I think we've got enough for two more if we make them quite big. Hook okay, in, slip stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then join that on near the end there. And then cut your yarn similar length to the end there so you've got your two bit two ends here if you're making a bracelet and then just pull that through and there you've got a row of bridges in the green there okay don't worry if you've come to the end and you've only got three left just simply make a smaller bridge there at the end while you're learning how to do it that would be fine so it's a good idea to practice that and make a few of those and then you start to, to do the next row. Okay, so the next row you need to join on another collar, pop that to one side, back in the box and let's see, let's do this nice yellow. Okay, so we're going to do yellow this time. Again, there's various ways that you can do this if you're teaching or learning how to do it. You can hook in the end like we did last time, anywhere near the end. And this time, we're just gonna start off with a chain of three. One, two, three. Okay, so we've got the three ends and a chain of three. It's just a short chain there. And that will take us, we're going to go under the green bridge. Let's do this right. We're using the yellow. So we're going to go under the green bridge. Okay, make sure your latch is open. Yarn over and bring it. You've got now on instead of having two on the hook, two loops on the hook, you've got actually got the bridge on the hook and the green bridge, and you've got the yellow stitch that's on your hook there. So you're going to pull it through to make your slip stitch and then we're going to do six again one two three four five six and you can see where we're going here's the next bridge the green one so we're going to hook under the bridge with the hook so we've got two loops on the hook we're yarning over show you that there we've got We've got this one on the hook from your chain, previous chain. We've hooked under the bridge, yarn over and pull it through both of those on the hook. And off you go again with your next six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So find your next loop. 
hook in, hook under, yarn over, pull it through. And you've got two loops on your hook. Let's see where they are yet. Yeah. And you pull that through both of them to make your slip stitch. And here you can see what's happening now. You're going, making another row of bridges on top of the bridges that you had before. I'm going to do six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hook under the bridge until you get to the ends. Under the bridge to finish. And then three more to get to the end. One, two, three. Hook into the end of the row like that and then you've got to cut off so you've got some yarn left there. Pull it up gently and there we've got a row of bridges with six yellow chains there. Okay, now you can carry on doing that with six at a time and it's rather nice and if you do if you start off a little bit longer you can make a headband. So you could make a bracelet if you do it longer and you can make a headband. These are some headbands that I made and you can see if you leave the yarn long then you can plait it as well which makes for a nice substantial length for your headband. And you can see these have got chains and slip, just chain and slip stitch to make those and they're done in rainbow colours as well. So that's a nice project to do. On my uh, table here, I'll just quickly run through these so you can see. What you need to do, nice lacy, a nice lacy um, fabric to start with. Chain and slip stitch under the bridges. Don't worry too much about what's happening at the end here at this stage. Okay. Um, the reason for that is if you're going to do a, 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 a if you're going to do a, a headband look, it just comes into the end here. Just don't worry too much about it about it being perfect at the end because it comes in and gathers up at the end like that. Okay. That's another one. And what you need to do next is to start doing them a little bit smaller. So this has only got five chain and slip stitch. So you want you need to start doing this is quite a long one look, but there's just five chain and slip stitch and it's a longer one. Okay, that would make quite a nice headband, especially if you put a few more colours on it. Maybe make the ends a bit longer look. So that's a great, great little project to do. Now, you might be thinking, where is all this leading? Why are we doing headbands when we're supposed to be making a fabric? Now, what you need to do next is to make those bridges a little bit smaller. And I think these, maybe they've got four in, five in, but they're getting less lacy and starting to look a little bit more like a fabric. So you do more chains, more headbands or more bracelets just using four chain and then after that you'll need to go on to making three chain and three chain and slip stitch and then it will start to look a little bit like this you can see the bridges are smaller there's the same amount of rows look with a blue row and an, a, a, um, an orange row there and a green row and you can see the first row which is the Foundation row at the bottom, the red one. So we'll put that down and show you again. We started with these two joined together and now we're beginning to make a fabric. You can see they're getting tighter and tighter. Okay, now this one has only got three chain and slip stitch. So Practice those, start getting smaller and smaller with your chains and then you'll come right down to having just three chain and slip stitch. And when you can do that, then you can start making something like this. 
the bottom row there where the C is, is just three chain and slip stitch. Okay, like that. And change the colours, make them the lengths that you want to make them. The black there is just three chain and slip stitch and then I put a blue row in and then shortened it, put, started the white a little bit further in look and then done a, a, a funnel on the top of the, the ship there. And that's how it's made and that's how you can get started doing your very, very simple way of doing a fabric. To finish off, I'm going to show you how to do a circle. And so if you're going to be start making a face and you're going to work on doing the eye, 